Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today I am going to commit a grave taboo and just talk about a set of books on more of a conceptual level that I haven't necessarily read word for word, but which I still, found, flipping through, found some interesting points. Once I tell you what they are, you'll probably explain. And that is the Brick Bible. Old Testament and the New Testament. So reviewing both, you know, Mary wept over the feet of Jesus and Crumb's interpretation of the book of Genesis. I was kind of intrigued to look at some of the other, you know, out there examples of comic book interpretations of the Bible. And I'm told I had heard of this before, but apparently I completely forgotten and came across it in a rather ridiculous Catholics react video. Don't necessarily recommend that channel, but it kind of comes up on my recommendations sometimes. So, the, a book, the, the Bible, kind of condensed a little bit obviously, and presented as Legos. It's easy to pass it off, it's just kind of ridiculous. I think it actually has some some merit. It was interesting. Much like Crumb's edition of Genesis, these editions of the Old and New Testament really benefit from being made by someone with an outside perspective. Editing Meepolis here. This is the point in the review where I originally referred to the creator and their assumed pronouns at that point. I'm not sure how this person was identifying when I originally published this video back in 2016, but in doing some further research before the publication of this re-edited version of the video, I noted that while the books continue to be corrected, credited to Brendan Powell Smith, they have since transitioned to being Elba Sperling and use she, her pronouns. She is also now working, apparently, on a brick Bible retelling of the Book of Mormon. So that's cool. Back to my original review. Alba Sperling is herself not a believer, but she doesn't necessarily come across as ant hugely antagonistic towards it, at least in the stuff that I read about her thoughts on the project and flipping through the project itself. There are some ways in which people could view this as being kind of an attack on Christianity just because it is does seem somewhat demeaning at times, but in a lot of ways it actually kind of brings the material forward in a fresh new way that people who have read it a million other times, it makes you actually think about in a different way. Even if it's simply the fact that there's naked Lego figures, which is in and of itself not graphic, but on a deeper level is still not something that a lot of Christians seem to be comfortable with. If the re reactions to this book are anything to go off of. It was also interesting, her depiction of uh, circumcision was also bizarrely graphic in the fact that there's this little, that there's a sword, there's a baby Lego, and there's like a blood Lego, and you're like, this is not graphic at all, but it's also strangely much more detailed than any other religious, like, representation of this act. And another interesting point is just the fact that since, you know, a lot of Legos are branded in one way or another, or, you know, obviously for one use, um, but can be creatively used for another, there's a lot of repurposing in interesting and amusing ways um, where Legos that are clearly supposed to be used for something else are like Jedi Legos being used for Jesus and some villain Lego uh, talking about, you know, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It's one of the villains with an eye patch, you know, so, yeah. The New Testament version also kind of tried to modernize it a bit too to make some of the parables more relatable and the angels are kind of ridiculous looking. So yeah, brief, brief thoughts. 
Um, obviously this book is not for everyone, and I am lazy, and since I felt fairly familiar with the material, I, I didn't personally feel like reading through the whole thing. I'm not a bit, although that probably had equally to do with the whole, I've read the Bible a bunch of times, and the fact that I don't necessarily like Lego comics. But it is, it was very interesting, so I wanted to touch on it briefly. Because as, you know, the foreword, especially in the New Testament, points out, it is, it could be helpful to a lot of people who are either just, you know, randomly interested in the Bible, but think it's intimidating or boring, and, you know, people who want a novel only way to just, you know, be amused by it. Again, reading the foreword by Wanda M. Lundy, I was, a particular paragraph stood out to me is that this book is for people who feel that the Bible is not relevant today, and it's for those who feel the Bible is outdated and the stories only relate to people of long ago. With the use of familiar toys, Smith demonstrates that the Bible is not a sterile book, and it does not shy away from painful human issues such as violence and death. In turn, the reader will begin to see how the biblical stories of old also relate directly to the present. Um, and this person is a professor of ministry studies at New York Theological Seminary, so they, they therefore are interested and think the Bible is relevant, etc. But, um, as I said, the author um, is the... And, you know, it's especially that Catholics React video, there was, there was a general trend to think that this was somehow some way to, you know, discredit the Bible completely and make fun of it. And I don't think that's necessarily true. And I did think that was, you know, interesting to see how different um, interpretations, even if they do come across as silly, you know, can you can help people relate to things better um, in different ways. Yeah, it's, and it's definitely not for children. That, that seems to be another common misconception. I mean, you know, understandably, but it, yeah, totally not for kids. Um, well, for young kids anyway. As I said, there's not any actual graphic violence or nudity. It's just kind of the idea of such that might lead to awkward conversations. So maybe it is for kids. Maybe it is for kids. Although apparently she he has also made some versions for kids, including Noah's Ark and The Christmas Story, which I guess I would assume are two separate ones and not she. He tried to combine them. Though that could be interesting. Noah's Ark meets the Christmas story. Lots of bizarre, bizarre interpretations of the Bible. And this is only scratching, scratching the surface. Um, I know there's some manga versions, anime stuff. This will probably be the end of it though. So, never fear. Secularism is on the rise on Literally Graphic. You don't have to listen to any more of my Bible nonsense. Um, I'm not trying to proselytize you. <laughs> And with that, I will see you next time. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13, also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.